we've done it a little bit last year. We didn't have the, the most success, uh, but you know, it has to be ready, but it was mainly circumstance. Gotcha. And um, as for Russell, do you have an update on him or a status on him for tomorrow? Yeah, uh, Russell went through the entire practice today. Uh, good chance he'll play a little bit, uh, a little bit, uh, probably not much. Good chance, not not one hundred percent. Quinn, how you doing, Coach? Doing well. I uh, just want to get an update on Garrison Matthews and Rui. Uh, I know Rui, you said was met with the eye doctor yesterday. Any updates on those guys and anybody else who may be going through some type of injury or recovery? Yeah, um, Rui is still out. Same eye irritation. Uh, it's going to take you know some time. I don't, I don't know how, how how long. Hopefully not much longer. But you know, we're obviously patient and. Um, whenever he's ready, we'll have him back. Uh, Garrison, he had that hip pointer. He could have played last night, um, but I didn't. I didn't want to throw him in there. I mean, he's he wants to play. He's probably as, as tough as they come. Uh, but he practiced entire practice today, so he might get opportunities to play tomorrow. Um, Brad did not um, practice today. Sore. I think it's either a sore back or, or I don't know what that's called. Uh, yeah, but he's nothing serious there. Let's with, with see how he feels tomorrow and, and go from there. Everybody else, um, DB practiced uh, today and a good chance that, depending on how he feels tomorrow, there's a good chance that he will, uh, Burkhans will play tomorrow. And with uh, Brad with the sore back, if he is cleared to go, tomorrow and healthy, will he play with Russell or is he going to sit the last preseason game out? Yeah, I mean, if Russell does play, he will definitely play. Um, if they're both feeling great tomorrow, but there's no reason. If they're not feeling uh, up to ready to play, we're not going to put him out there in an exhibition game, last one. Neither of them. Uh, they should be fine for sure for the first game, but maybe maybe they play tomorrow. Let's see. It's going to be a wait and see till how they feel tomorrow morning. Thank you, Coach. Yep. Any other questions? I don't think I have a number. Ava. Ava, come on, Ava. Yeah, sorry, I always raise my hand too late. That's my problem. Um, with just um, one exhibition left, Scott, I know you said the um, the starting spot is still open and they'll stay fluid. But what do you need to see from your guys? Um, who are still competing for that starting spot? Well, I mean, it's 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 kind of I mean, it's I'm not making an excuse, but it's it's a little challenging for everybody because even last night we didn't have really potentially five of our or four of our starters. I mean, if you want to throw uh, Bertens as a potential starter. You know, Brad only played 14 minutes. So guys are playing different spots that they pro or different roles that they probably won't play when we're whole. Um, but it's still open. You know, there's one more game today was a very competitive, it's one of our better practices, uh, very competitive. Um, but it's, uh, we still have one game um, and a couple more practices before we have to make that decision. But it's, I'm kind of leaning one side, one, one, I'm leaning one way, but I'm gonna keep that between myself and the staff. So With, don't text, anybody don't text me tonight and ask. <laughs> you foiled my plan. Um, With all of the kind of changing lineups and everything like that, is that why you're kind of hammering down on, you need to see guys, but I think you said it about Denny, like playing his minutes hard last night, is that, that, does that almost grow in importance because you know that guys are playing all over the floor and not necessarily in their natural position. Yeah, I mean, it's also, it's, it's, it's great that they do get opportunities they probably would have never um, received, but it's also tough to make those decisions because a lot of times they're playing a role that they're not, you know, at their best. Uh, I thought last night was the case on a, on a few guys, but I try to factor all that in. I mean, I'm, half joking that we have a guy already, but it's still open. It's still up in the air and it's still, it's going to be, you know, 
probably flew it unless somebody really just nails it down and, and doesn't want to give it up um, with just great play. But we also we also understand we have if it if it's not um, Bertans, he's going to play a lot of those minutes. Um, so I mean he's he practiced today. I mean it's amazing. That you, not that I forgot how well he shoots it, but you kind of forget how well he shoots it with guys trying to contest because he shoots it so high and he's obviously a pretty pretty good athlete and and it, his shots are very rarely contest and you think it's contest but it's it's really not but i thought i thought uh, the next couple of days of practice after tomorrow night's game is going to be pretty pretty good for the competition yoko hi coach how are you I'm doing well how are you good I uh, just want to make sure that is Rui doing some individual workouts? Um, not at the moment. Not at the moment. Uh, it's still the eye irritation. He has some, um, I think, blur. It's like a little blurry vision. So um, he's he's definitely not doing anything. Uh, don't know. I don't know if he's going to do anything today. But he's he's definitely not here today. Um, this morning. So. Um, all I heard, all I'm hearing is it's getting better. It's going to take takes a few more days, probably. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. I will take a couple more. Fred. Scott Brad has talked with us a couple of times now about how one of his goals from the off season was to be able to take deep threes. Uh, if you guys, if he's able to do that consistently, that means you could have lineups with two guys with him and Davis who were able to shoot from 27 or something. How does that change the dynamic of your offense, if that's the case? Well, I mean, it gives you a lot more spacing. I mean, he did win their, our, our deep three uh, point shootout the other day, outshot uh, DB from, from distance. Uh, I mean, these guys shoot it, with, I mean, it's effortless and the range, it, it definitely helps. You know, when you have Russ on ish on the floor that, their speed and their change of direction, their strength and their power that goes downhill is pretty important. And if these guys have to be guarded and covered to 25 to 28 feet out, it only opens up those lanes and seams. But um, those two guys uh, out of everybody on our team, there's really not a not a, uh, a limit I will put on their you know their three point shooting. They can shoot you know, they can shoot up to 27, 28 feet pretty easily. Neil. Hey, Coach. Uh, Denny was telling us a little bit yesterday about how, you know, it's a culture change for him just coming to the United States. Is there anything that the organization is doing to maybe see if they can somewhat, you know, ease that transition? Or is it much like anything else with the NBA transition, just it's going to take its time to happen? I mean, it's, it's definitely it's, it's definitely not. I'm always amazed that the players that I've, I've always coached, the young players, the rookies that are not from the States, how quick, how quickly they uh, pick things up, adapt, and being away from, you know, family and home. And, but they, they, they all do it. It's just, it's pretty incredible. I, I think the, our organization does a good job making uh, Danny and his family feel at home. Um, but we do that with all of our rookies. It's a transition for all of our rookies. And, um, but I, I think he's done a good job. But it's like I said, it's, I don't know how they do it. So, I mean, I would have trouble if, I, if it was on the other way, uh, the way where I had to go over there and, and learn a culture, a language. I mean, he didn't have to learn the, the language. But I, it's definitely uh, challenging. But I think he's pretty much um, our organization. I think they do a really good job of getting guys and their families to really feel good about, you know, being in DC? Um, well, for me in the first half, the hardest thing was we didn't have Rui and we didn't have Davis. So I was playing the four. And so like, I don't ever play the four. So it made it really hard for me to like, kind of like find a flow because at the end of the day, like I was trying to like, kind of like help our guards out. Like, you know, like the four and the five, like they set the screens and stuff like that. And so I think I felt like I was 
out there overthinking it, like just more so because I was at the four position. And then when I went into the second half, I was kind of more back in my comfortable spot of playing the two, playing the three and able to be aggressive. So that's definitely something I have to go back and just look at film and make sure I am capable of playing that position. Cause you know, maybe I can expand my game through one through four, you know? And also I did notice that your you're taking more hesitation pull-ups. Like I didn't really see any like those mid-range hezy pull-ups last year. Is that something you just added to your game just to be a more complete player? Or what kind of goes into that confidence coming around that mid-range area? Um, I feel like for me personally, it's just more so about the fact that like some teams like Detroit, like they play that super drop type of like with their bigs and they're dropping them literally all the way to the paint. Mm -hmm. And so they kind of put you in a bind where like you have to either get off the ball or you take that mid-range shot. And so with the confidence I've like instilled in myself and just like the way I've been shooting the ball this off season, I definitely feel comfortable taking it. But, you know, I definitely would prefer to get more to the rim. Appreciate that. Oh, is your is your eye good? You got a little- Yeah, I'm, I'm good. I, I got pulling my, a, you pulling a Nelly on me right now. <laughs> Appreciate it. Ava? Hey, Troy, um, kind of going off of that, um, Scott said, told us that he told you guys he needs to see more urgency from you after the game last night. How, understanding that that's so much of a challenge when you're not playing your natural position and you don't have all your guys on the floor, like how did you kind of internalize that message? Is it something that goes through your mind where you're like, well, that's going to be so much easier when we actually have all of our guys out there? Or is that something that you kind of have to, that's more internal? Like, I'm wondering how you kind of thought about that. Um, for me personally, I, I definitely think it's one of those things that you have to personalize as a person, um, even though we don't have everybody out there, um, especially like with our nature of like coming out like in games and not being ready to play from the start. That's something that we definitely have to take pride in individually, regardless of who's on the court, myself included. And so it's definitely something that's just personal that we have to work on. And, you know, we just got to make sure we jump ahead of it and make sure we're reminding each other like, hey, like we got to go out here. We got to play from this jump. And considering it has been such a weird preseason, just with everybody sitting out in the weird timeline, what do you feel like you've gotten from these first two games? Do you feel like you're in a better rhythm now? Yeah, uh, for me personally, I, for, for me, like this year, the biggest thing is just like being able to mentally go through the ups and downs and not be phased by it. That's the biggest thing that I've been working on. Like I said, like just talking about like last game, like I don't think I scored until like the fourth quarter, like you know, like that didn't bother me because I already knew, like I know who I am as a player. And so it's just more so of doing what the team needs. And so if I need to play the four in order for us to win, that's what I'm going to do. But at the end of the day, it's just more so of not letting my confidence waver. Thanks, Troy. Yeah. Neil. Hey, Troy. Uh, you've told us before how you wanted to take, you know, a little bit more of a leadership role, um, especially, you know, last year with the bubble and just being an overall very young team. There was a moment, I believe in the first preseason game where you were talking to Denny and explaining something to him. Um, I'm curious, A, what, what, what that was, and if you don't remember just any general advice that you've been giving to the rookies uh, so far. Um, I don't remember particularly that play, um, what I was saying to him, um, but pretty much like just for me personally, like with Denny is, he reminds me of myself a lot, like just the way he plays and like how versatile he is and that stuff. And so like when I came into the league, I felt like we had a lot of vets on our team, but I didn't really have a chance to like have anybody that was like close to my age, kind of like tell me the in and ins and outs and like, you know, the little stuff that'll help me and make him look like more sharp. So I definitely kind of take more pride in the data, just like telling him little stuff. At the end of the day, he, he was a pro overseas and he's a pro here. He knows how to play the game, but it's just little stuff to try to, you know, take the pressure off of him because I know that transition isn't easy. So could you give an example of what you're terming as quote unquote little stuff? Um, like for example, um, I'll say something like, okay, somebody will drive the ball on the right side of the court and Denny will be in the corner. And in his head, in his head, he's thinking, okay, I need to help my teammate out because my teammates beat. But at the end of the day, that's not his job. If you're in that strong side corner, you stay on the three-point shooter because we don't want to give up the strong side three. Just stuff like that where he has good intentions, but it's just like, hey, like that's not like technically the right thing to do. And so just kind of giving him pointers on that so that he doesn't just keep on making the same mistakes over and over. Thanks, Troy. Yeah. Fred. Hey, Troy, what's going on? Hey, how you doing, Fred? Um, just just kind of building off on on Denny, I'm kind of curious because you're both kind of uh, like you have similar basketball mentalities, at least with the way that you play. 
with with your conversations like how how have you learned that he sees the game do you consider him more of a is he a study guy is he an instincts guy like how would you describe his basketball mentality I would definitely say instincts uh just because of the fact that he's played at a high level overseas and so like with a guy like that he knows how to play the game it's just more so about him feeling comfortable and feeling more relaxed and you know like especially coming in as a rookie like I already know how all that is like you know dealing with like the stuff going on and like making all the adjustments off the court and so like I said just making him feel more comfortable and letting him know like hey it's gonna be okay but like you need to do this and do that and so just little stuff to help him at the end of the day like I said he's a pro and he gets it so thanks Troy yep all right last question uh Ben Hey, Troy, how's it going? Hey, how you doing? A few days ago, someone had asked Scott Brooks about whether you'll play point guard this season, and he seemed to suggest that's not your position, even though you played that in the bubble. With that being said, would you like to play point guard this season, and have you talked to Coach about your role in that regard? Um, not really. I mean, at the end of the day, like, my versatility is what makes me me. So regardless of whatever position I'm at, that is what helps me be the player I am. So, you know, that that gives us the accessibility to be able to move me everywhere and be able to do things you never know with with guys getting hurt and with substitutions and midseason, you know, so much stuff can change. And so it's just being able to be available and to be able to play those different positions, you know, and, you know, it, it stuff could change in the middle of the season. It's a long, very a long season, but whatever we need to do to win, that's the position I'm going to play. And so, so, yeah, that doesn't really, the point guard stuff doesn't really concern me too much. Really what we, I feel like we have to do on defense is just communicate more often. We have to, we have to have constant talk out there on the defensive end. Uh, we're not a team that can just go out there lax, lackadaisical and uh, just think that we can perform at our best when we're really not that team. You know, we're not a, we're not a team that switches, a, that switches the on and off switch. We have to keep that switch on and maintain it. Throughout that first quarter, especially, you know, uh, last two times we played in the first quarter, we got punched in the mouth. We got to respond to that. And I think that's our biggest thing going forward into the next game. Quentin. What's up, TV? What's up? Um, after the addition of Robin Lopez, Scott Brooks and a lot of the, the guys on that staff said that that was really a guy that they could bring in to kind of push you on defense and kind of teach you those veteran ways of playing defense as a big. So last night you, you had four blocks. Um, it's, it's, it's working, whatever you're doing out there. What have you learned from Robin Lopez so far just practicing with him? Basically just uh, placement and movement, you know, uh, being more aware on the defensive end, always being in constant, constant looking, constant rotation and being in the right spot at the right time as well, you know, uh, especially, you know, some of that things come from being in the fire and just learning from it, past experiences. And then also, you know, with great vets with Robin, you know, you got Russ, Brad there, that's always going to help you as well. Um, it's really good, you know, to have those guys with you. Appreciate that, TB. Thank you. Fred. Hey, Thomas. Uh, last night you played a bunch of minutes next to Mo. And you had some moments last year where you played against, where you played alongside other conventional bigs. But for the most part, you were you were on like kind of more modern guys. Does it affect your game at all the way you play when playing next? Say one more. Say that last part again. Yeah. Does it does it affect the way that you play, the way you operate on the floor when you're playing with another big compared to when you're not? Um. No, I try not to let it affect me at all. Um. We have reps in practice where, we, where we've been on the same team as well. And uh, we try to help each other out, big to big passing in any way, shape, or form, or try and make it as easy as possible. Um, you know, it's different, so we got to get used to it. It takes a lot of time, a lot of reps, and, you know, a lot of times just doing it over and over again sometimes. But I feel like our, our, our little communication and thing is going to get better and better as time goes on. Thanks, Thomas. Mm -hmm. John Gibson. Hi, yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, um, doing a story on Dewey Hachimura, and I just wanted to get a couple questions in. Uh, what differences have you noticed about him coming into this season, and how's the communication with him? His communication has gone up. You know, his defensive uh, efficiency has gone up. His offensive efficiency is super, super aggressive, and it helps us in so many ways. You know, uh, Rui has, has 
improved so much and you can see it from his game from in the summer from when we played I believed in LA together to what he's doing now is absolutely marvelous it's great Chris Thank Miller you. TV what's up brother how you doing Chris hey man keep it 100 with me what was the deal with you and Blake last night and because you guys play again tomorrow it's kind of like a playoff thing where you don't play another team. You see him again in like a couple of hours. Man, ain't no bad blood, man. It's all it's all it is. Just a it's just a battle of the game going on. You know, just heated moments. That's all it is. <laughs> I'm laughing because what gets you going is is your energy level, and I thought your energy level last night was really good. I want to ask you about shot blocking. We heard a lot of. You know, the front office, the coaches, fans, media all said in the offseason during the draft and free agency, Wizards have to go get some rim protection. Did you hear that? And was that any, did you use that as any motivation coming into this season? I really didn't look at it or hear any of it. I try and stay apart from that social media and like he say, she say stuff. Uh, I try and be really real with myself and look myself in the mirror and see if I need to improve or, or if I didn't improve on anything, I needed to do it. And I felt like rim protection was a real big thing for me. I, I thought about it for a while, even before going into the bubble, that I need to protect that rim more often. And that was my biggest thing on the defensive end was trying to be more of a rim protector. If I'm a five and I'm down there playing with the bigs, I have to use my strength and ability. Like I do all this stuff in the, in the off season when we come back and I have to utilize that and do it in the game. And I really was emphasizing that on defense, especially with me. Appreciate it. Quinn, do you have another one? Last question. Uh, after you hung up, like you hung on the rim yesterday, that would have been your set. Well, that was your second technical. Were you aware that that technical foul did not count towards an ejection for you, or you you were just happy to be in the game still after that? Happy to be in the game. I'm not going. <laughs> <laughs> Appreciate it, you. Ava. Yeah, Thomas. Sorry, this might be um, a ignorant question but how when you are in the offseason how do you specifically go about getting back to, better at, at rim protection is it a mindset thing like are there ways yeah. you got stronger yeah uh ways i've gotten stronger is basically legs and uh movement movement wise and then actually going out there and doing it uh I believe you said it before uh just actual reps and everything and just going out there and being aware of it like this is my job this is what I have to do to help this team. And I feel like I can do that to help this team, you know, succeed in any way, shape, or form. And, you know, I feel like my teammates feel the same way. The coaches feel the same way. And I want to continue to do that. Thank you. I appreciate that. All right, last question here from Karita. Hey, Thomas. Yesterday, Denny, he was sharing how this is all a new experience for him and he's still learning and getting better. What have your observations been of him in practice and these preseason games? You know, he's been a sponge. He's been a real good sponge. Uh, he's trying to absorb everything. I know we move at a fast pace and uh, we expect a lot and want a lot from him, but we know that he can give it to us. And, you know, he's he's been very coachable. He's been honest with us. And uh, just really trying to ask questions and see what he could fit in, uh, you know, on the offense and defense and, you know, just seeing what he can do to help this team. And that's really what we need from him and for him to be aggressive what he's been doing has been really great for us as well.